You want to know the five things that every beginner needs to know with Fusion 360? Let's do it. I'm Tyler Beck. I'll be taking you through this Fusion 360 series. So if you're just getting started with Fusion or any design tool, it can be a little intimidating. I've actually been teaching engineers, designers, makers. I've taught CAD, FEA, PDM, PLM. Seeing as how the VP is such a VIP, shouldn't we keep the PC on the QT? Because if it leaks to the VC, you can end up an MIA and then we'd all be put on KP. <laughs> Please take a minute, hit the subscribe button, post your questions or comments down below. I'm gonna read all of them. So what's the first thing we need to get into? installations and working with different machines or even multiple machines. So if you're just getting into a design tool, this is a game changer. Oh. Yes, that's awesome. It's amazing. You could work with your PC at the office. You could log into a coworker's workstation, say your laptop's down. You could work, log in and see your data there. You could go home and work on your Mac. I'm gonna be working on a MacBook Pro right now. And then if you go to your grandma's house, you could even grab her old PC and log in and see your data there. Anywhere you've got Fusion installed, you can use that data. Let's run through the installation on a PC. Let's talk about number three, preferences. Fusion, preferences, the pull down, a few, just wanna talk about a couple of them. Pick your language, offline cache. How much do you want stored locally that you can access it faster even though it's in cloud data? You wanna go back 30 days, 60 days. The automatic recovery time begins after each save. So this auto save can be a it can be a lifesaver. Zoom, pan, and orbit. If you're coming from SOLIDWORKS like I was, you might choose SOLIDWORKS in this case, or you can choose Inventor Fusion. Your default units, depending on which one you're working on, cam, design, or simulation, choose the default units you're most comfortable working in that you want by default. You can change this on any file. All right, one more that I like. In the preview, I like to check this sketch box. This ensures that just like SOLIDWORKS, that when my sketches are underdefined or defined, I can tell visually. I'm gonna get more into how to define sketches in the sketch video. Check it out. Number four, workspaces. What's amazing about this is you could just think about this as a toolbar, but it's actually including functionality across an entire platform. So we have model. This is where you're gonna do parametric models. Think any assembly design where it's got moving parts. Patch, this is typically called surfacing. Surfacing is just zero thickness bodies. It doesn't have any thickness. Typically used to make more complex shapes, organic shapes, complex curves. Render, the ability to make your objects look less like a cartoon and look more realistic applying shading, lighting, backgrounds. Animation, the ability to take built-in movement, any degrees of freedom that you've designed into an assembly and animate that motion or show that motion in a video. Simulation, this is typically called finite element analysis and what it really is is the ability to test something virtually. You can break it, you can see how long, you can see how far it's gonna displace. You can find stresses. You can see expected behavior without having to build a prototype and fun. Cam, the ability to create tool paths where you're sending this out to a lathe, you're sending it out to a CNC, a water jet. Drawings, this is the collateral for manufacturers. You need 2D drawings. You need to be able to build these things so that people can fabricate and manufacture them. Okay, now let's talk about how to sketch and build a part. Let's talk about the basics of sketching. I'm gonna get into sketching in a following video because 
it's crucial. You want to spend some time on that. Basics are you can create basic shapes in Fusion with primitives, box, cylinder, sphere. Very simple. You select a face or a plane, you drag, and then you can adjust depth. You can adjust all three parameters over here in the dialog. Pretty cool, pretty fast. Obviously it's simple. It's simple on purpose. With sketching and extrude and revolve and sweep, you've got more power, but primitives are faster. And we've got a model built. That's the basics. Okay, number five. Let's talk about how to save this out, save it locally. So in the data panel, let's go ahead and save this. Um, I created a fixture in this project, but I also want to save this new one. We're gonna call this our jig. All right, so I'm gonna run through a series of design changes and I'm gonna save each time. Okay, now that I've got some designs done, you can see that I saved as I went. We can see this, it's at version four. When I hit the information, I can view the rest of the versions by clicking. Take it a second. I can see a visual, a thumbnail of each version. At any time, I could choose to promote or open that particular version. So it's saving all this data into the cloud. So if my buddy Lars logs in, starts playing with it as well, he'll save a version, I'm saving a version, we could get up to version 17, but at any time we can look and visualize at each level, understand. Now, as you can guess, that gets tricky. So managing when he's working, when I'm working, that's something that can get a little bit tricky, so be aware of that. How do I view it out in the cloud? Select it. You can open the details out in the web. So again, how do I share this link out to someone so that they could visualize it? All right, you can see, you can even see the versions here out in the browser. Again, the same options you can view or promote at each level. Under the pull down with new design or new design from file, I have the save as, I can export. When I export, I can save this to my computer and choose a local folder or location. Thanks for joining. In the following video, I'm gonna talk about this crucial thing that we've learned in the forums that people need to know when they, they're getting started and making assemblies. It's called rule number one. We'll get into that. Talked about, we're gonna get into Fusion Team or A360. We're gonna get into sketching. So check those videos out. I'll be creating a Fusion 360 video every week. So subscribe to get notified. Thanks so much for watching. Ask any questions down below. So hey, if you wanna learn more, be sure to check out some videos done by Lars, as well as there's a really cool one hour webinar done by Aaron Magnin. I've got those down below in the description. Check them out. Thanks for watching.